It's Tuesday afternoon, and today I want to come to you with the technicality of the gut-brain connection. I've done videos before on the gut-brain connection. It's correlation with serotonin, benzodiazepines, painkillers, your immune system, how all these things are housed in what's called your enteric nervous system. So as Metchnikoff said in the early 1900s, fix your gut, fix your health and that death begins in the gut. So today what I want to do, and you can see by this picture, that by looking at maybe the part of your small intestine, you can understand everything that I've talked about in regards to serotonin. Now, the 95% of the serotonin in the GI system, or the gut, small intestine, this was actually studied, and I already went through this, by Langley and Starling and Bayless back in 1921, and they showed that, you know, there's over 1 million preganglionic fibers in the small intestine or stomach itself. And there's only about 2,000 in the central nervous system that the enteric nervous system can actually work um, without reflex control of the central nervous system. Um, and that there was actually no connection between the GI system and the central nervous system. So, you know, I've talked about all these things, but now I want to show you the technicality because everyone says, well, yeah, serotonin is produced in the gut but why? And let's look at how it's produced. So if you look at this picture in front of you, now this is a picture of your small intestine basically. And what you're looking at is what are called the EC cells, the enterochromaffin cells. Now a lot of this stuff is technical, but the bottom line is you need to know function in order to know dysfunction. So what happens when we eat food? You know, we eat it, goes into the, 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 the mouth, which has to be an alkalinic pH, goes down the esophagus, through the cardiac sphincter, into the stomach, which has to be acidic pH. You have pepsin, HCL, you know, on and on. It makes its way to the, to the small intestine, which is a alkalinic pH. Now, when it makes it to the, the small intestine, that acidity signals certain enzymes from the pancreas, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to be released. Well, how does food cause serotonin to be released and why? So you can see the bolus of food up top there. It hits the villi and microvilli in the concentric folds, which are the absorptive parts of the small intestine. So what it does is it hits this part of the small intestine. And this signals these certain cells called the, enter, they're called the enterochromaffin cells, or we'll call them E cells. It signals these cells to release 5-HTP. So what happens is, this 5-HTP enters what's called the lamina propria, and you can see that. It's kind of like the top part of your small intestine, per se, layer-wise. So the 5-HTP enters the lamina propria because you've eaten food, and it encounters terminals of basically internal sensory neurons. Now, what happens is these internal sensory neurons basically, retain, basically contain receptors for 5-HTP. And these receptors project into the mucosa or the submucosal layers. And you can see that's kind of the second and third layers. And all the way down in what's, into what's called the myenteric ganglion or what is called the Auerbach's plexus. Well, this Auerbach's plexus or myenteric ganglion basically causes the peristalsis or the initiation of peristalsis through re reflex control in the small intestine. So... Why is that important? I might have lost some of you, but if you're still here, great. The importance of this is 95% of the serotonin's housed in the gut. It acts as a neurotransmitter and a signaling, a signaling mechanism. What the bottom line is, the serotonin that's produced in your gut actually is used to increase peristalsis in the GI system. Now, I'm not going to go into diet and all these things, but just understand that it's, it's used for peristalsis, and at the same time, the most important, and this is probably over 90% of it, serotonin acts as more of a go-between mechanism, keeping the brain in tune of what is going on in the gut all the time. So, and that's 90% of it. And that street is more one way, meaning gut to the brain and not brain to the gut. So hopefully you've learned something quick. 
Hopefully you understand the why behind the gut-brain connection, but it's food that stimulates the EC cells to basically connect with intrinsic sensory receptors that help with peristalsis and signal the brain to what's going on. So a lot of the times you see people taking SSRIs, they're depressed, could be emotional, but at the same time, they have severe gut dysfunction. They're taking these SSRIs and it's making it 10 times worse. So the key to this is understanding, but understand that from our perspective, fix your gut, fix your health. And that if most of the serotonin in your body, because 5-HTP is a precursor that is produced in your GI system, why are we focusing on the brain? Why are we focusing on the effect and not the cause?